the Behringer X32 and Wing share an S32 stage box, and more coming up next. These videos are made possible by the incredible people whose names are on the screen right now. Join them by becoming a channel member here on YouTube or join the crew on Patreon linked below. There's different cool rewards for both and different tiers to choose from. Let's get right into it. There are lots of reasons and configurations you might specifically want to look into with these systems, but we're going to get things up and running in this video so you can see how it's done. This is just one possible setup of many, and hopefully this video will bring up some questions that we can cover in future episodes too, so be sure to leave them below. Starting with the basics, you'll have to use your imagination on the distances between the gear, but it's important to remember before we start that we need to use shielded twisted pair Cat5e network cable terminated with Neutrik Ethercon ends, and we should keep the runs under 100 meters between each point. The way this system is currently set up is with the X32 acting as a USB audio interface for this editing computer, and the Wing acting as a USB interface for a Windows 10 PC running OBS for streaming. Either mixer could just as easily be the front of house console, monitor console, or streaming console, depending on your needs and preferences of how you like to work, or whichever combination of mixers you own. Both mixers are connected through the S32 in this configuration, and they're sharing those inputs and outputs along with each other's local inputs and outputs as needed. There's also a Dante audio network running here with the Behringer Wing Dante expansion card and a number of other Dante interfaces for the other computers, but we'll cover that in another video. It all might seem a bit complicated, but the important thing for this video is that the X32 rack is the main USB audio interface for this Mac, and the Wing is doing the same thing for a Windows machine. This could just as easily be a church or stage setup though, where your inputs and outputs need to be set and ready and already configured for various use cases. The S32 is a really easy stage box to set up in this type of configuration. You'll need to use the AES50 port A on the X32 rack. We need to confirm that the X32's clock source is set to internal, and that will provide the clock to the stage box. Routing is now handled by the X32, and you'll be able to set up the inputs and outputs you need there. The defaults are listed in the S32 Quick Start Guide for sharing one stage box with multiple consoles, but that routing can be changed as needed. Again, you can go into the software or the mixer to handle that. An important area to get familiar with at this point is the setup tab on those X32 mixers or in the software. This is where you'll have remote control of the stage box preamps, even for channels you aren't using on that local X32 specifically. This is also where you can find controls to lock the stage box, assign head amp gain split, and choose to give remote head amp control to either AES 50 port A or B. Now these features could be very handy if you're running two X32 mixers together, and they're also really helpful if you're using an X32 and a wing together. Since the S32 stage box is connected to the X32 rack using both of their AES 50A ports, we're gonna connect the wing to AES 50B on the S32. Now I've done some custom routing here because I don't need all the channels at every location. So in this setup right now, for instance, the X32 rack is only using the first eight channels from the stage box on the workbench. However, the wing is getting all 32 of those channels patched directly. The outputs as well are being patched from the X32 rack because I have that turned on all the time. Typically my voiceover mic here and another ambient mic at the workbench are connected to the X32 as local inputs, along with a 3.5 millimeter stereo input for recording playback from other gear. To make this all work, the X32 has a USB connection to the Mac for audio inputs and outputs, and also a connection to the office network for control. Operating the mixer this way with the control software really works well for me, for video editing especially. It allows me to seamlessly record voiceovers or effects as they're needed into any software I need, and it provides a really handy physical volume knob right next to me here for the near field monitors. Moving over to the workbench, the S32 stage box provides inputs and outputs already routed to where they need to go. 
inputs are routed to the Mac Mini's DAW for recording and video calls voice over IP, while outputs stay routed for testing and diagnosing other gear. So now we can see that the X32 is patched with the local channels as well as USB outputs from the Mac Mini for editing, including left and right for stereo, as well as the mono channel and full surround routing when needed. Channels 15, 16 on the X32 is the local 3.5 millimeter. Then we get eight channels coming in from the wing, which could be individual sources or mixes, depending on what you need. Right now, it's just the individual sources. And then eight channels from the S32 on the workbench. At the wing, it's much the same with the local inputs first, followed by local USB playback from that streaming PC. Then we pick up the workbench inputs from the S32, and finally the desktop inputs at the X32R. In the next video, we'll talk about the Dante expansion card in this wing, what that's being used for, and how it's all set up in terms of clocks and routing. We'll get a bit more advanced and switch my voiceover microphone back to using the Here M8RX Dante Mic Pre and Personal Mixer, and we'll do it without losing any of the functionality or routing we built today. A lot of uncertain questions come in regularly about different audio networks and how to work with digital audio between the different brands and flavors of networks out there these days. We're going to look at some different ways Dante can be implemented into setups like this, what its strengths and weaknesses are, and how it differs from AES-50 Super Mac that we're using here today. A big part of using digital networked audio is making moving it around between systems much easier. And I think that'll really connect for anyone who's missing that when you see some real working examples. Leave any questions about this video or the next one in the comments. I try to answer every question that comes in, especially from channel members, since those ones give me a notification as soon as they pop up. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching.